Tom Hartman here with you, and I am honored and pleased to have with me in the studio Chris Hedges, winner of the Pulitzer Prize, uh, the author of a new book, Death of the Liberal Class. And uh, liberals conceded too much to the power elite, right in the back. The tragedy of the liberal class and the institutions it controls is that it succumbed to opportunism and finally to fear. The liberals abrogated their moral role. Chris, you got a lot of liberals really PO'd at you. Well, they've betrayed the very values they should have been out there fighting to defend. Uh, and we got a, a glimpse of the consequences of that Tuesday when we began to empower the lunatic fringe of the Republican Party. Are you suggesting that Obama was a liberal? No. I'm suggesting that Obama portrayed himself, like Bill Clinton and others, as a liberal. Uh, and yet... Um, didn't do anything to promote core liberal values. Could that be because he wasn't a liberal, because he was a centrist? Well, the, the, the pillars of the liberal establishment, the Democratic Party, the press, uh, universities, liberal religious institutions, labor unions, uh, have all walked away from the very tenets of liberalism. So that you're right, that what is defined as liberalism within American society, uh, in fact, is... Uh, bears very little, uh, there's very little difference between that and what we see uh, within the neocon movement. I mean, the policies of the Bush administration are now significantly different from the policies of the Barack Obama administration. Right, and in your book you, you chronicle this in excruciating detail. And, and, you know, reading the first few chapters, one gets a feeling of, uh, you know, as <laughs> I call myself a liberal, <laughs> Uh, of of almost like you know, holy cow, what have we done? You know, almost despair. And yet, at the end of the book, your your very last chapter of the book, I, I have it here in front of me. I, and I, I found this really interesting because I know when I was writing the last hours of ancient sunlight, um, which is about peak oil and the end of civilization and the the destruction of America. I was I was so depressed writing the first third of that book that I, I got physically sick, and I had to find how can we find some hope in this? And I and I suspect that you were grappling with something very similar in this book. Because at the end you say, you know, the indifference to the plight of others and the cult of self is what the corporate state seeks to instill in us. The state appeals to pleasure as well as fear to crush compassion. We will have to continue to fight the mechanisms of that dominant culture if for no other reason than to preserve through even small, tiny acts our common humanity. And basically your call for action at the end of the book is Gandhian, it seems, is defiance. Can you translate that into behavior? Well, it's the difference between rebellion and revolution. Revolution is about recreating or reconfiguring power. Rebellion is about a constant kind of antagonism to power. And um, the tragedy of the collapse of liberal institutions and the liberal ethic is that it has terminated the mechanisms within uh, governance uh, by which the suffering and uh, injustices that are visited on Americans can be redressed. Uh, that, that, that closing that safety valve, in essence, uh, has ossified and killed the democratic state. Uh, you know, we saw, with, for instance, with the New Deal, the, the, uh, uh, through labor unions, independent press, a progressive wing of the Democratic Party, with the collapse of capitalism, uh, an ability uh, within uh, the power structure to redress the uh, wrongs that had been committed against the American working class. We saw it again with the civil rights movement. Now, uh, that mechanism doesn't work. And uh, Barack Obama's two years in office, I think, have illustrated that uh, in, in depressing detail. I, so, so I think now, in, in essence, what we've undergone is a kind of coup d'etat in slow motion, a corporate coup d'etat in slow motion, and they've won. And now, and, 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 and confronting that stark reality is important because it's only then that we can begin to talk about hope uh, and ways to respond and ways to rebel. I find a tremendous echo of your writing in Oswald Spengler's book in 1928. I'm forgetting the title of the book. The Decline and Fall of the West. Uh, that's right, and Fall of the West. 
And it's been about a decade. A fascist, though. <laughs> well, he was. He was. He, actually, he was... Uh, a sympathizer with it. I'd say he was a plutocrat. Right. He, he believed that there should be a, 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 a ruling elite, but nonetheless, I mean, we can criticize Marx for, Marx for his prescriptions, but his analysis, I think, in right. Capital was accurate. Spengler's analysis, he said, you know that society is ossifying, is rigidifying, when it becomes a caricature of itself, particularly when, when uh, politics becomes a caricature of itself. Political theater. Political theater, exactly. And... and and in, and in in his book, he he didn't actually even have that much of a hope, hopeful call for action. But we went through that. I mean, he wrote that in twenty eight, a year before the crash, and then the crash happened, and Americans woke up. Robbie Botra just recently, well, it was a couple of years ago, wrote a book called the uh, the the coming golden age, as I recall the title, the, the Southern Methodist University Economist, a uh, New York Times bestselling author, in which he suggests that there's going to be this god awful crash. And in fact, we had him on the show a couple of days ago. It's going to get a lot worse than it is, and that that's going to produce such revulsion at the corruption of politics that Americans are going to wake up and take back over. Are you that optimistic, Chris Hedges? Well, we certainly are flirting with the possibility of collapse. Uh, what what do we just do? Uh, print uh, six hundred billion dollars, uh, which we passed up to Wall Street, which they're now using to not to lend. I mean, that was the idea to Americans in need but to uh, speculate in the world currency market. Yeah. Lending is actually, in today's financial times, small business lending is actually down. Right. So, um, yeah, we're playing a very, very dangerous game. We've hollowed out our manufacturing sector. We believe money is real. Um, Emile Zola wrote a great novel about that uh, called Money in the end of the 19th century. Yeah. Uh, these speculative bubbles we have seen uh, throughout history collapse and burst. And um, pillaging the Treasury and using the Fed to reinflate this bubble has been a disastrous policy. So, yes, we are. And, and then just let's not forget the environmental degradation, which we refuse to confront at Copenhagen. But all of that was happening in the 20s, too. Yeah. I mean, well, you had the, the rise of the robber barons. I mean, right. And so, yes, we are flirting with collapse. I would disagree with him in this sense, that we don't have the movements and the organizations that we had, uh, certainly before World War I and the aftermath of World War I, the Wobblies, the CIO, um, radical uh, publications like Masses or Appeal to Reason. Uh, we had uh, mechanisms by which to fight back. These have been completely decimated, uh, in large part with the, the collaboration of the liberal class itself. And so we not only lack the mechanisms with which to respond from the left, but we lack the vocabulary even to discuss what's happening. And my fear is that uh, we can hold off these proto-fascist movements as long as there is stability. They need a crisis in order to come to power. But should we descend into a period of crisis, then I think the backlash will be a right-wing backlash. And I think it will uh, have the character of the uh, uh, kind of irrationality uh, that that uh, typifies those who've gathered around the Tea Party movement. This is this, this has been one of my great concerns. I, in another book I wrote about it, but it's it, it, that you know the Great Depression hit the United States and Germany at the same time, right. and we had FDR and they right. had Hitler, and right. and they had and he had spent the better part of a decade building what we might call a Tea Party movement, the right. Brown Shirts, who were all volunteers. This wasn't the government; they were all private citizens, and are we are we seeing right now constructed with the money of oil billionaires from Texas the the, the seeds of a proto fascist movement? We'll get into the into into this in a little more detail and what we can do about it and and how these liberal institutions have become hollowed out and and what we might be able to do about that with Chris Hedges, his new book Death of the Liberal Class. Chris Hedges. And uh, here on the Tom Hartman program, stick around. We'll be right back, and we'll be taking your calls for Chris, by the way, at eight six six nine eight seven Tom. 